good morning, everyone. Welcome to LA. My name is Susan Minato. I am co-president of Unite Here Local 11, which is a labor union that represents hospitality and food service members, 33,000 in Southern California and Arizona. I'm proud to say I'm also, thank you, everyone. I'm proud to say that I'm also chair of the Board of Trustees of the Hospitality Training Academy, otherwise known as the HTA. And I want to point out the fantastic staff at HTA, Executive Director Aideen Foreman, Alice, George, Madeline, they're an excellent group of people who made this program happen. So uh, I want to uh, make everyone understand the sort of the gargantuan task that we had. So I want to scroll back to a very unpleasant time, March of 2020. The whole hospitality industry is shut down. 95% of the workers are laid off. The city, the county, and the state are grappling with how to stop the spread of coronavirus. And thousands of our most vulnerable senior citizens are isolated at home, quietly afraid, and wondering how are they gonna get their next meal. But fortunately, here's what happened next. Our union, Unite Here Local 11, and the Hospitality Training Academy developed a COVID protocol for kitchen and packaging work and trained thousands of workers. We teamed with the LA County Federation of Labor and worked with the city of Los Angeles, the county of Los Angeles, the state of California, and worked with FEMA to make sure that over a thousand professional food service workers went back to work in those shut down industrial kitchens, making high quality meals delivered by out of work taxi and airport shuttle drivers to those 10 thousand vulnerable and low-income seniors who could not leave their homes and so the serving our community program was born today scrolling back to today March of 2021 one year later we celebrate today the three millionth meal being served And this Serving Our Community program shows what we can accomplish when we work collaboratively. When union labor, employers, the training academy, and smart elected leaders who come together to innovatively and safely provide vital resources to our community. This work would be impossible without our employer partners, and they're all here. So I wanna just recognize the LA Convention Center led by Doan Liu and Ellen Schwartz, I'm not sure where you are here. Levy Restaurants, the JW Marriott Ritz-Carlton LA Live, led by our special leader, Javier Cano. There he is right here. Uh, the Bonaventure Hotel, another special employer, led by GM Ken Pilgrim. The Sheraton Grand LA, uh, led by the awesome GM Steve Cho. Are you here, Steve? There he is. The Beverly Hilton, led by the GM, Sandy Murphy. I think she's here as well. There she is. USC, the University of Southern California, was in at the beginning. And Pomona College, I know we have some representation over here from Pomona College. Thank you. We're also joined by some of our incredible members who cook and package the meals and took it on faith that those COVID, pro those COVID protocols were going to be safe and you'll meet a couple of them later in the program. But now it is my pleasure to introduce to you some of the leaders who made this possible. The first speaker is a true friend to the Hospitality Tra Training Academy, a leader who really, really needs no introduction. He's the mayor of the greatest city in the United States who played a critical role at a critical moment to make this program a reality. I introduce you, Eric Garcetti. Well, good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you, Susan. You represent an extraordinary group of people. When I was in my very first job as a professor at USC, then 
here, Local 11, asked me to stand up for the dining hall and the restaurant workers and the dorm workers at USC. And I spent a night in jail because I believed in the men and women who were a part of this union and spent a night in jail with a man who asked me why I was there. And I told him the story of my family, my grandfather, Salvador, may his memory be a blessed one, who came from Mexico and came here with nothing and built a life for himself, became a veteran, earned his citizenship in World War II, opened a barber shop just down the street here. And the man asked me where he was from. And I said, a small town in the state of Chihuahua in Mexico called Parral. And he started tearing up. And I asked him why he was tearing up. And he said, that's where I'm from. And your union brought together, he said, you're fighting for what I'm fighting for, which is for my child one day to have a job like yours, to be a professor at the same place his dad cleans. And I know at every hotel, and I know in every kitchen, we have people who hold the Los Angeles dream. In every taxi cab and shuttle, there are folks who have come here from other places or who have been born here in Los Angeles who are trying to build that dream. And a year ago next week, all of that was shattered. The worst moment in our city's history, in a political context in this country in which we learn all the time how things don't work and how people don't like each other, where a virus became partisan, wearing a mask became a political statement instead of a life-saving thing to do. But here in Los Angeles and in California, witness what we are, who we are. Not just this union, but these incredible companies, these hotels, these restaurant companies, a city council together with a county and a state and a city working together because you always hear we hate each other. We actually love each other. We found love this year. And I said that we were going to lead through this with LA Love. And let me tell you, that's just what we've done. And three million meals is not a statistic, it's a story. Behind every single one of those is a person who felt isolated and lonely, didn't know if they would eat. The most basic human emotions. We met a meal with an act of love. We met a person with an expression of who we are. So thank you to you, to, to Susan, to Aideen Foreman, a long time. City Hall alum as well, if we can claim you. To Julie Sue, who's the most incredible Secretary of Labor this state has ever had, and soon to become the Deputy Secretary for the United States of America. To my friend, Councilmember Curran Price, who always led, saying we can't forget those that are left behind in the midst of this. Laura Trejo and her staff from the Department of Aging, give her a round of applause as well. <laughs> Ellen Schwartz and Don Liu, my dear friends. And I want to thank Otto uh, Solorzano as well, who is the Acting Director of the County's Department of Workforce Development, Aging and Services. This isn't just an expression of a program that works that put people back to work, that paid their rent, that fed their families. It was also an example for this nation, and it inspired FEMA. And people asked in the last administration, did they do anything good? And I said, of course. Just because there's a bad person at the top doesn't mean there's not always good people in government. We found great people like Bob Fenton, our now acting national administrator of FEMA, who said yes to reimbursements for meals. We had a governor, and we need to call his name out today because Gavin Newsom stepped up to feed not just Los Angeles, but this entire state. And as attacks come at him, I want to defend him because he has fed not just Los Angeles, but California. Give him a round of applause for the leadership that that took as well. And at its peak, this program delivered 120 meals to 21,000 vulnerable seniors each week. This secured 1,100 jobs that otherwise would have been lost. So I'm told the longer we speak, the closer it is to raining. So I'm going to just speak a little bit in Spanish. But I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for leading with love. Thank you for embodying LA love and for showing the strength and the love that our city is about. We are going to roar back. Make no mistake. We're about to be swimming in vaccines in this country. And what I said a couple weeks ago, the president confirmed and accelerated even further yesterday that every adult in America who wants a vaccine by May 
will be able to get one. That means we better get ready to open up more kitchens and open up more rooms and welcome back more workers and have conventions here, right here at the LA Convention Center, the new LA Convention Center, which we're gonna redo, and a strategy to make sure that this city of angels rises again. Brevamente en español, hoy marcamos un hito extraordinario. Tres millones de comidas distribuidas a angelinos en necesidad a través del programa Servir a Nuestra Comunidad del Proyecto Rumki. Al final del último mes de marzo, más de la mitad de los emplea empleados de los hoteles aquí en Los Ángeles estaban sin trabajo. Más de la mitad. A la vez, otros también estaban sufriendo, uh, específicamente personas de tercera edad. Muchos de nuestra población de personas de tercera edad de repente sentían un profundo uh, aislamiento y la inseguridad alimentaria. Así que tomamos acción. El condado, el estado, los oficiales federales y esta unión. Unite here. Con una solución para ayudar a las personas mayores más vulnerables mientras apoyamos a nuestros trabajadores de hotelería. El programa piloto entregó 120 mil comidos a 21 mil de nuestros adultos mayores más vulnerables cada semana. Cada semana. Y ese éxito creó la oportunidad de ampliar el programa. Creamos un programa de formación para entrenar a más trabajadores con las habilidades y herramientas necesarias para volver al trabajo. Y el espacio en la cocina para ampliar la distribución de comidas. Este equipo es un equipo de sueño, Dream Team. And I also wanted to give a shout out to our county federation. I don't know, did, did Ron leave? Ron's always lurking in the back. He doesn't want to be in front of the cameras. But I, yo quiero dar mis gracias a mi hermano, Ron Herrera, también. Your program, by the way, to feed folks broadly, not just this union, but all the unions, has saved lives. Pero hoy estoy orgulloso de anunciar que hemos preparado tres millones de comidas durante la pandemia para personas más vulnerables. En cada etapa de esta pandemia, hemos podido ayudar a nuestros residentes más afectados y espero que sigamos trabajando juntos. Y Los Ángeles, la esperanza está en el horizonte. Gracias. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti. So I'd like to introduce another. I'd like to introduce another critical player in this program, the California Secretary of Labor, and our next U.S. De Deputy Labor Secretary. Secretary Julie Su is the daughter of immigrants. She spent decades fighting for dignity and respect for workers. As an attorney, she represented immigrants who were enslaved in LA sweatshops, won millions of dollars in reparations for them, and, and most importantly, helped spark the movement against sweatshops here and abroad. As commissioner and labor secretary, she has fought against wage theft and misclassification of workers. She has brought labor and employers together to solve common problems, hence serving our community program. We came up with the germ of the idea, but this program would not have been possible without her visionary leadership. Her drive and her commitment to justice are exactly what President Biden has nominated Julie Su for, for his department for his deputy labor secretary. We are grateful, so grateful for her support, and we are so excited to have Julie Sue with us today. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you for having me here. Thanks to everybody for making this all possible. Um, I do wanna say that um, 
the Hospitality Training Academy is really an example of what happens when we double down on ideas that work. It's really an example of why California, when we say that this is the place where innovation happens, this is the uh, where the place uh, where the future begins and the ideas that are sparked here become ideas that not only spread um, uh, across the nation, but really uh, take hold in terms of the ideology of how we're supposed to make change and make the world better. It's also no accident that this is happening here in Los Angeles with the incredible leadership of my friend, Mayor Eric Garcetti, a city that is synonymous with creativity and invention. Um, I wanted to echo what, um, what Susan said uh, about the Hospitality Training Academy, uh, which is this is a project that began before the pandemic that demonstrated how incredible it is to be able to um, change and innovate as needed when there are crises that happen and what happens when you bring together unions and workers and employers who do right by their workers and government to really make good on our promise to serve people. So uh, the Hospitality Training Academy, I actually cut the ribbon on the academy in May of 2019. So. Um, the, the, it, has, it, it is an example of a, a high road training partnership, which is an effort that we in California, in the state, have doubled down on, have invested in. And the idea of high road training partnerships is really that industries do better when you bring labor and management together to both plan for the future and to make sure that workers are trained to meet the needs of employers. And on my visits to the Hospitality Training Academy, I was not only impressed by all the people who work there, the love, the passion that's put into it, um, but also by the students who come through, who are many uh, of the people who face the biggest barriers to employment uh, in our society, who are given a chance in the Hospitality Training Academy, um, and also by the employers who come on site to, uh, to choose and to hire people who've gone through the program. And so it really is one of those win-win programs. So when the pandemic hit, it really elevated uh, to demonstrate not only what it's able to do in good times, but what it's able to do in hard times. And so it immediately, um, it immediately pivoted to providing these, uh, these boxed um, meals for millions of people who suddenly were homebound, uh, who, for whom it was too dangerous to go out. And it helped not only to feed people, but to meet the governor's call that people ought to stay distanced and ought to stay home in order to, uh, to, to, to bend the curve and stop the pandemic. And it also allowed people to stay in good jobs. Uh, it's so significant that at a time of just rabid unemployment and the devastation that the pandemic has caused, that there was a program that moved quickly and moved um, brilliantly to keep people in good jobs. And so our high road training partnerships the HTA is one example of them. We also have them throughout the state and we have many of them in LA, again, an example of the innovation and promise of Los Angeles. We have them with the county, we have them um, with the Building Skills Partnership, we have them with, uh, with LAX Build, we have them in all kinds of industries where you have good employers, good jobs, and unions who, who stand for those workers. Um, so we'll continue to invest in them. We're so proud uh, of, of our partnership um, with the Unite Here Local 11, the leadership of Susan, the leadership of Aideen and HTA. And these are really all examples of what we mean as the state of California. When we say that if you're an employer who does right by your workers, the state is on your side. This is an example of what we mean when we say that we have to build an economy on good jobs that work for people. It's also an example of what we mean when we say that every policy goal that we have is an opportunity to create good jobs in the communities that need them the most. So the policy of feeding people during a pandemic, the policy of, 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 of being the, the home of, uh, of hospitality and entertainment, all of these are examples of good jobs that, um, that, that we're committed to in California. And to the workers of California, what a project like this says is that you deserve a right to a good job, you deserve a right to your union, you deserve a right for people to back you up during hard times, and we're really grateful for everything you've done to keep us going during this, this hard year. So thank you so much to everybody for your incredible work. Anybody here think that Julie Sue should be our next Deputy Labor Secretary? Yeah. Woo! Yes. Thank you so much, Secretary Sue.
now I'd like to invite uh, Teresa Trejo. She's a longtime Local 11 member, food service worker, and leader of Unite Here Local 11. She's worked at this LA Convention Center for 20 years, and she will now share with you what it means to work on the su Serving Our Community program. Teresa? Good morning, my name is Teresa Trejo and I have worked at Los Angeles Convention Center for the last 20 years and I am a proud member of Unite Here Local 11. I am proud to take part of this in the Serving Our Communities program because, it's, um, because this has allowed me to work and provide for my family during such a hard time and many workers due to the pandemic. Working at these programs also allows me to keep my health care for my family, which brought me peace of mind in case of any of them get sick. I, I am so thankful for the leadership of our union, the HTA, my employer, uh, Levy Restaurants at LACC, and the, elect the elected officials have to ensure the meals to provide for those most needed with our communities. Seeing, uh, seeing our cooks, our packagers, our drivers working together to provide this service allows me to feel like I'm doing our part doing the fight for the pandemic. Three million, um, three million meals was a team effort and we should all be very proud. Thank you. I'm going to do it in Spanish. Mi nombre es Teresa Trejo. Tengo 20 años trabajando en el Centro de Convenciones de Los Ángeles. Soy orgullosamente miembro de Unite Here Local 11. Estoy orgullosa de participar en el programa sirviendo a nuestras comunidades porque me ha permitido trabajar y mantener a mi familia durante estos momentos tan difíciles debido a la pandemia. Trabajar en este programa también me ha permitido mantener la seguridad médica para mi familia, lo que me ha brindado tranquilidad en caso de que algunos se enfermen. Estoy muy agradecida del liderazgo de mi sindicato de HTA, de mi empleador, Libby Restaurant en LACC, los funcionarios electos y tomado para garantizar que promocion, uh, promo, proporcionen comidas a los más necesitados de nuestra comunidad. Ver a todos los cocineros, empacadores y conductores trabajando juntos para brindar el servicio que me ha permitido sentirme orgullosa y haciendo parte de la lucha contra esta pandemia. Tres millones de comida fue un esfuerzo en equipo y todos deberíamos estar muy orgullosos. Gracias. Our next speaker is someone who has stood by and advocated for LA's workers and their families for a very long time. He represents this district, the 9th District, where many of our union members reside. He is a special friend to Unite Here Local 11 and the HTA. Please welcome Council Member Curran Price. Good morning. Thank you, Susan. Uh, to the mayor, Madam Secretary, uh, all of our friends. Uh, you know, frequently the mayor talks about the angels uh, in our city, uh, angels uh, stepping up to the plate. And when we think about the, the difficult circumstances we've been through, it's clear that United Here, Local 11, and the Hospitality Training Academy have been a group of those angels right here in our city. We've seen it demonstrated countless of times, uh, especially with the neighbors right here in the 9th District, where they're helping someone pick up groceries, providing neighbors with rides to appointments, or just calling to check in on someone. It has really made a difference. Acts of kindness, no matter how big or small, are precisely what uh, we need in our communities as we fight our way back from this pandemic and ultimately, and ultimately try to begin to heal from the dark days of our lives. Uh, this is very personal to me. Uh, District 9 has been especially hit hard by COVID-19. 
Uh, Madam Secretary, we've had almost 60,000, 60,000 uh, citizens infected in CD9, and over 700 deaths, 700 deaths over the past uh, months, and so it's been really hard on our neighbors. I, I see the great need uh, in, in something as simple as receiving a meal that offers a glimmer of hope and a chance. Together, uh, we are all trying to alleviate some of the heavy burden that our families are facing. Just this week, my office has uh, been focused on developing a guaranteed basic income uh, program. Uh, incidentally, a program that our mayor has been a national leader on uh, around our country. Our program would provide 500 single parents with a monthly stipend of $1,000 for a year. $1,000 for a year. We think that could be life-changing to provide food, clothing, shelter, savings. Uh, we don't know exactly how impactful it's going to be, but we know that it really can make a difference. We're continuing to look for ways to be there for our neighbors through emergency food giveaways, diaper distributions, free masks, uh, and most recently pop-up vaccination clinics to meet the immediate needs in our neighborhoods, uh, again, with the support of our mayor. We're doing everything that can be done, but we can't do it alone, which is why we appreciate all the selfless partners involved here who put others, the needs of others, ahead of their own. I want to applaud Unite Here and the Hospitality Training Academy for putting together a program that is not only making a credible milestone, but recently, but recently has treated a thousand jobs filled by recently laid off union workers, and union and non-union workers, uh, and catering, uh, as I said, to our most vulnerable, uh, including 10,000 homebound seniors and individuals experiencing homelessness and low-income families. Uh, you're not only given a, a token, uh, a token used for survival but you're demonstrating what it means to be in service to your community. So I'm proud to stand here today and to be a part of this celebration. In the words of a hero we look to in times of reflection, Dr. Martin Luther King, who once said, everyone has the power for greatness, not for fame, but greatness, because greatness is determined by service. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Price. So we have our last speaker, but before we call him up, I just want to have make sure that everybody stays in place because we're going to do some manual labor after this. We're going to take these boxes and we're going to load these cabs and shuttles so that this load can be delivered to seniors today. So, but the last speaker, uh, who's the closer, by the way. <laughs> um, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Ron Herrera, who is the president of the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor. Now he is, I'm proud to call him my personal friend. I'm proud because he is my leader. Uh, I see his nonstop effort that he puts in every day, truly every day. Sundays are not a day off for him and every day for the union workers in our county. There are 850,000 of them and they all have families and it requires our strong leader, Ron Herrera, to help uh, advocate for them and he is a wonderful leader for LA County. Thank you and I want to introduce our Labor Chief, Ron Herrera. Thank you, Sister Susan, that was very kind. As you heard, I'm Ron Herrera, and I'm the president of the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor, and also an international vice president for the Teamsters Union. And I want to start out by thanking the people here today, everyone, and those who made today possible. I commend all of you for having the courage of thinking out of the box and creating such a great program. During the worst crisis, of global scale. Mayor Eric Garcetti, Council Member Price, Laura Trejo of the County Department of Workforce Development, Supervisor Solis, I'm not sure if she's here, my sister, Julie Sue, as you heard, 
the next Deputy Secretary of Labor for the United States of America, and of course my sister Susan Monado, whose efforts here are, are amazing. And of course, the governor of our great state of California, Gavin Newsom. Three million meals served. It's hard to wrap your head around that. But the importance of one meal is something that we all can relate to. Something that we're reminded of time and time again during this pandemic. This crisis brought to light society's inequities and the severed lifeline that many vulnerable Angelinos depended on for support, for food, for a meal. But even as we experience unprecedented job loss, closures across the state, and the nerve-wracking uncertainty we still came together and defied all the odds. This collaboration between local governments and labor shows the best in all of us and what we can accomplish together. This initiative fed over 9,500 household seniors and others impacted by the pandemic. It brought back work to 1,100 union hotel and food service workers and taxi drivers, allowing them to keep providing for their families and getting them through these otherwise dark times. As we begin to see light at the end of the tunnel, let's not forget the power and change this collaboration has had on our communities and our people. When our local representatives and government stand with the labor movement, there's nothing that cannot be achieved. Thank you very much. Okay, so before we get to work, just want to recognize, and others have already recognized, the tremendous work of Laura Trejo from the Department of Aging, the City Department of Aging. Greg Irish, the Executive Director of the LA City Workforce Development Board. Greg, I think you're here over there. And then Otto Solorzano, my buddy, Director of the County Department of Workforce Development, Aging, and Community Services. So we're trying to beat the rain here. So to close, I would like to invite up Armando Garcia, who is a chief shop steward for Unite Here Local 11, who is a 39-year employee at the Westin Bonaventure. Armando, where are you? <laughs> he's gonna say a couple words and then he's gonna instruct us how to move over here and do some labor, okay? Armando. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Armando Garcia. I'm working in the Western Bonaventure Hotel for 39 years. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody to come today. And now I invite to you to provide the food to the taxi driver. Thank you very much. You have a good day.